Hello everyone, this is Kimberly from the Clinton Public Library and today I'm coming to you with another computer class. Today I wanted to go over a little tour of our online catalog. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is um, the stay at home order is ending soon and that means that we will be returning to curbside service or no contact curbside service. Um, uh, very soon and I want to show you a little bit about how to search for a book in our catalog and place it on hold and logging into your account and everything. Um, so to get started what you need to do is go to our library website which is clintonpubliclibrary.org and that's what you're seeing in front of you here. Um, this is what it usually looks like. And then uh, you can do this two ways, but the way I like to do it the best is if you go up here to my account, um, you're going to click on my account. If you are on a tablet or a cell phone or a smartphone, um, there is instead going to be a menu option at the top right of the screen that's usually um, three lines together. You would click on that and then click on my account. So let's click here. And this is our online catalog. Now our online catalog will show you everything that is in our physical collection. So this means all of our um, movies, books, magazines, and other materials that are located within the library. This is not going to include all the materials that are on Tennessee Reads. That's a completely separate collection for us. And I'm going to log in uh, with a library card for the first time so I can show you all how uh, that's going to go. So to log in to your card, uh, you go up here to log in right here. You can search for books in our catalog um, if you want without logging in, but um, if you want to place them on hold, you will need to log in. So let's click please log in and let's get rid of that. And uh, you're going to put in your library card number here, and your library card number is on the back of your uh, library card underneath the barcode. This is a dummy card. It's going to get deleted after this, and I've never logged in to this account before, so I'm going to um, type in user pass, which is what it's prompting me to do. First time users enter user pass. So if you've never, ever, ever logged in here before, um, user pass, all one word, all lowercase, it's going to be your password. Okay, and then it'll prompt you to change your password. So make it something that you will remember, but something that is secure. And then submit. And from now on, I'm not going to save that. From now on, every time you log in with that library card number, um, it's going to uh, require you to put in the password that you just created. Now. If you forget your password, you can give us a call at the library and we can reset that for you. We'll just need some information from you to prove that you are who you say you are. Now, this is our online catalog. We are now logged in because now instead of saying, please log in, it's saying, hello, technology. My name is technology for today. And then it'll have your account. Um, just to give you a little bit of a tour here, um, if at any time, you need to go back to this page that you see here. Um, you can click this little house button in the top left corner. And if anytime you need to search for a particular book or a subject or um, anything like that, uh, you would do so in the middle here. We'll get a little bit more into the search function in just a second, um, but let's stick to this front page for right now. Um, this has our library logo and then uh, we have a little section for our hours and our phone number if you ever have any feedback. We also have a section here if you want to give us feedback on our catalog or um, any books that are in the collection, things like that, uh, you can submit information here. Now, uh, what you're seeing underneath here are new books for different areas of the library. So, new picks for kids if it's in the kids section of the library and we've either recently acquired it or recently cataloged it. Um, it's in this little carousel right here that you can move around. Uh, what 
most people want to know are the new DVDs we get in. Um, so if you get on this homepage and then go down here to new DVDs, you can see a few of the new ones that we've cataloged. Here we go. And let's scroll up. And um, before we get into the search function, uh, I want to show you what your account is going to look like. So go up here to where it says your name and your account. Click there and it's going to give you a list of options right here that you can uh, use. So if in any time you need to log out, you can log out right here. Uh, if in any time you need to go to the home page, you can click home right up here. Uh, and if you want to see anything that you have uh, checked out, you're going to go to items out and it'll go to a page that has your checked out items here. This will show like um, covers and things that you currently have checked out. This is a dummy card. I haven't checked anything out on it. Okay. And then if you had anything on hold, you can check the status of your hold right here as well. There's also some other items uh, available to you. Uh, a lot of people ask us uh, if they've checked out a book before. We actually uh, cannot see the books that you have checked out in the past. It's a privacy issue. But if you want to keep a record of what you're checking out, you can set your um, settings to allow you to see that. So if I activated my history right now and then clicked OK to acknowledge that you want the library system to keep track of your items, you can hit OK. And then every time I checked something out or uh, returned it, it would show up in this little checkout history. So you could go back and see if you've read something or not. Uh, this is not something that the library is going to use for you guys. Uh, we cannot see this, only you can see this. Okay, and then um, you can look at your fines by clicking on fine and lost item payment. You cannot pay your fines uh, through this uh, portal. You can only pay your fines at the library. Uh, and then you can do some stuff with uh, your settings. So your profile here, you can go in and uh, change whether or not you want to be emailed. You can change your email in here if you would like. Um, and then anything that's grayed out is stuff that uh, you cannot uh, change. That's something only a librarian can change. Okay, and then when you have put in your email or put in whether you want to be emailed, you would hit save. So yeah, that's your, your portal interaction. If you wanna see what you have on hold, what you've checked out, um, any lost items that are on your account, your checkout history, your fines, things like that. Let's uh, go ahead and teach you how to search for a book and uh, put it on hold. So uh, I'm just going to look for a book that I would be interested in. My go-to example is always going to be Harry Potter. So I'm going to type in Harry Potter. And you see it's going to give you a lot of different options to search here. So it's going by the title of what I'm searching in in this section, and then maybe a series or a subject. If I typed in something more broad, like uh, maybe bugs, um, it's going to give me the same sort of uh, categories. Title, so bug is in the title. Um, title series, so bug is in the series title um, or author, somebody has bug in their name. You can search for authors if you would like. Um, you can also change the parameters of where you're searching. So this is searching by keyword. So it's taking one word and it's applying it to the entirety of the catalog. If you click here, you can change it to an author search, a title search, a subject search, an ISBN if you're looking for a particular edition of something, um, and all sorts of things. I usually keep it on keyword because that's the most broad search and it takes into account misspellings of words. Um, when you get into author and title, it's really easy to uh, misspell or put in the title wrong and nothing will come up. So I'm going to keep it on keyword. 
and let's go back to searching for Harry Potter. And I'm just going to hit enter. And it's going to show me uh, everything in our physical collection that has anything to do with Harry Potter. Um, and you can see it's not going to separate books. It's not from DVDs unless I tell it to. This is a keyword search that's uh, searching the entirety of our catalog. Now, what information is being presented to me here? So let's start from the left. Um, on the left, uh, you get some options. So if I only wanted to see available books, I could check this and let it load. And it's only going to show me things that are available. Uh, so my results page uh, significantly decreased. Okay, to get rid of that parameter, I just have to look here. You see where it says available? And I can click the X right here and get rid of it. Now, um, if you're trying to whittle something down, you can use all of the sort of subject identifiers and filters on the left. Um, we usually search by subject, by author. Um, sometimes we'll search by location if you uh, want to search a particular section of the library. So if you only want children's books or if you only want adult books, you can search by location. Uh, some people like to search by reading level. We don't always uh, stick the reading level in for some of the books that are cataloged, um, so I wouldn't rely on that too much. But definitely subject, author, uh, material types. You can search through our different material types. Um, and then location and publisher, for sure. Now, in each of these boxes, you're going to have different information presented to you. So uh, it's going to give you a preview of the cover of the book, if we have the cover in the system. So sometimes when we auto-populate and we're cataloging a book into the system, it won't put the picture uh, right here. Uh, you can see that where it says cover art not available down here in the center of the screen. And actually let me draw on the page for you here. Right there. Okay. And then it's going to give you the title of the book. So this first one that's popping up is the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. And it's going to give you some other information about the item. So in this case, the author, uh, the publisher, uh, when it was published, and then it's going to tell you what format we have it in. So in this case, this is cataloged as a book, which is a physical book, and we have one of one copy available. So we have one copy that we own in the library, and that one copy is available. Then it's going to show you, if you uh, click location here, it's going to show you some more information. Uh, if you're searching within the library, it's going to tell you where the location, so children's room juvenile fiction or juvenile nonfiction for this one because it's a cookbook. And then it's going to give you the call number. So what this is, J for juvenile, 641.5942, which is a very long Dewey Decibel number. And then BUC for the author's last name. Then it's going to give you uh, the status of the item. If something is available, it's going to have a green dot. That's important for placing a hold for the curbside service. Let's see if I can find one that's not available. Okay, so uh, this Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is checked out a lot. Right now it's the physical book. We only have uh, two copies in our collection of this particular uh, edition, but there's zero available. So if I click show locations, it's going to have a red dot. It's not going to give you much more information than not available. Um, just know if it's green. You can uh, uh, currently check it out. If it is red, then it is not available. And this one is a different type of book. It's also located in the children's room, but it's in juvenile fiction. So that's against our back wall in the front of the library now. And then it says Juv, J for juvenile, and then ROW 
for Rowling, so J.K. Rowling. Okay, and then let's look at some of the other stuff that you're going to see. Um, I'm going to click on book right here, and then we'll come back to this page. So if I click book, it's going to give me more information about the book. So it's going to give me the location again. Let me annotate the location, just spread out a little bit more, right? Um, and then on the other side, it's going to give me uh, some more options. So availability one of one. If the book is currently on hold right here, it's going to tell you how many people are in on hold for it. So if it's a very popular item, like um, I think Little Fire is Everywhere or um, Becoming by Michelle Obama is still very much on hold all the time. Uh, some of some of the more popular items, like a James Patterson, uh, is going to have a long hold queue. You can get on uh, this page here and see how many holds are uh, currently in that queue before you place the book on hold for yourself. You can also modify your search directly from this screen. right here, which we'll get to in a second. And then there's a few other items for you. Uh, what's important here though is where if there's going to be a summary for a book, uh, it's usually on this page. And then it's going to give you subject headings and things for the book. And this is usually for library use. It's also going to tell you if you scroll down things that are on the shelf with this book. This is going to be a varied shelf because um, it's a cookbook, so there's lots of different cookbooks on the shelf with this particular book. Okay, now we're going to go back to that home page. And I want to show you sort of what a DVD would look like as well. So I'm going to show locations on this DVD. And it says there's one of one available, right? Um, DVDs is in our adult DVD fiction um, collection. And then it says DVD H-A-R for Harry Potter. So DVDs are alphabetical by title and books are alphabetical by author's last name. And this particular item is available to check out. So it is available to place on hold. Now, if you would like to place a hold on any item, which is what you will need to do um, if you're utilizing the curbside service, you would need to go to this little icon right here that looks like a little hand pointing. Place a hold. And then um, if you don't need it right now, you can uh, put in a date here. So if I didn't need this book until next month, I could put a uh, date here. Uh, I could add some notes for librarians if I needed to. And then if it's something that is currently checked out, uh, but you need it for a specific time period, but not after that time period, you could cancel the hold if uh, it's not pulled by then. I'm just going to go ahead and place this hold. So I'm going to go down here to place hold. And then I want to say reserve place, cool beans, and then OK. Okay, and now if you see on the square at the top, which is the one we just clicked on, the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook, it says book one of one available, like before, but then it says one on hold, one holds. So I click book here, there will be one hold in queue. Here we go. So I've successfully placed a book on hold. Now, um, what if I want to see all the books I currently have on hold in their status? I would just simply go back to your account like I did before. And I would go to items on hold. And this would be listed in my hold area. And I could suspend it, I could cancel it from here um, if I needed to. If I suspended it, I could suspend it to next month, uh, to June if I wanted to, uh, but that's available to me. 
I'm going to go ahead and cancel that hold so uh, whoever's at the library right now doesn't accidentally pull it. <laughs> okay, and my reserve was canceled. Now you can do this with other books. Um, it doesn't have to be Harry Potter. So let's look up, like I said before, uh, Little Fires Everywhere, which is apparently a very popular book club book. And I'm just going to, it brought up the one I needed, so I'm going to click on that title. It's going to load for me. And it's going to bring up uh, exactly what I wanted. So in this case, Little Fires Everywhere, um, I'm looking for that exact title. This happens to be the book that I'm looking for. Um, so it brought me exactly to that. And it gives me the same information. So title, Little Fires Everywhere, the cover, here. Uh, author Celeste Ng. It's going to say the author's last name first and then the first name. Publisher, uh, the date this was published, and then how many copies we have in the library and uh, how many holds are currently on that book. When I hit show locations, um, this is actually going to be yellow because it's currently checked out. So if it's uh, red or yellow, it's uh, currently not available. Okay, and you can see the location for this one. It says Clinton Public Library Adult Fiction. Um, call number FNG for ING. And then um, in addition, if it's checked out currently, it's going to say this yellow dot and then when that book is due. So when a book is uh, due, it has a due date like this, and there's a hold list, the book cannot be renewed uh, for that person. So they only have that two week loan period instead of being able to renew twice. Um, in this case, we're in a specific uh, uh, situation where we're allowing uh, certain holds and uh, checkouts to last longer than normal. Um, so this is saying longer than the two week hold period. Now you're not going to be able to see anybody's information um, in this particular section, like even if it says four holds in queue. Um, as a patron, you're not allowed to see other patrons that have the book. Um, so you don't have to worry about your information uh, being anywhere. Um, it's just going to say how many people are in front of you. Now this uh, particular book has a more robust uh, catalog than the previous book that we looked at, the Harry Potter. Um, so what's underneath here is called a mark record, which is library lingo, um, but has the synopsis of the book. And then it has the author, the title, how many pages are in this particular book when it was published, and then the potential subjects that have been attached to this particular book. And I could place this on hold, which I'm going to do. Place it on hold. Here we go. And now that is on hold for me. And then again, if I wanted to cancel that hold, I would go up to your account items on hold, and then I'm going to go ahead and cancel this hold because I do not need it. There we go. Now, if you wanted a little bit more advanced of a search, instead of just this keyword search, because that is a little bit uh, overwhelming when you have 40 pages of results, you can do an advanced search um, by going over to the side of the search bar right here and clicking advanced. And there's going to be a whole lot of options that you can look for. And it's just like filtering out your search. So um, if I wanted to uh, say I wanted to read a book about uh, spring, I could use that as a keyword. Um, if I knew the particular author or the author's last name, I could use that. Um, if I knew a title, I could put a title in there. And then you have those filters that we saw earlier that you could also add in. And it'll tell you, um, we currently have over 45,000 records in our catalog. So it searches 
through those 45,000 records to find the item that you're looking for. And like I said before, um, if you ever need to get back to the home page, you can click home and it takes you right back to the beginning. Okay, and then um, if you need to log out, you can either click your account and log out or you can click log out right here. Here we go, and it goes back to this login screen. Now, um, thank you for watching this week's computer class. I hope this helps you a lot. Remember, this is only for our physical collection. It is not part of the Tennessee Reads collection. When we do open up curbside service again, we will, of course, tell you immediately when we have that information. So keep an eye out on our Facebook, our social media, our website, all of those things, and we'll get that information to you as soon as possible. Now, um, you can still place a hold over the phone if you feel more comfortable, but this is an option for you if you ever needed to uh, get on and uh, renew books online or if you wanted to place a hold online. You can also, if you currently have a book checked out, uh, renew that item through my account, uh, the my account option. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, my name is Kimberly. You can send any questions that you have to the questions at clintonpubliclibrary.org or my email at computer underscore training at clintonpubliclibrary.org. You can call the library at 865-457-0519 or you can ask any questions on our social media pages or direct messages if you want to. Hope you all have a nice and safe day and uh, thank you for coming.